What is good, Ambush? And welcome, welcome to this week's episode of the Desert Tiger Podcast. Here with me, the host of the DTP, I am the Colton G. And this week, I'm joined by a few of the members of Waterfront, and well, they want to give you an encore. Encore is Waterfront's brand new single, their second single. You're going to be hearing it on today's episode, and we're also going to be going behind the music with this new track, as well as a little bit of behind the music with their first single, their debut single, Loose Cannon, which dropped at the tail end of 2019. So with that being said, this is a little bit of a newer band, so we're also going to be diving into exactly what brought the members of Waterfront all together, what exactly was it like finding this band's sound, who wrote these two singles, was it a certain member, was it a full band experience, and of course the band, like many of us, have had to adapt the way that we're doing things here in 2020. So how has the entire pandemic affected things for Waterfront as they've been moving forward with plans with this, their second single? And well, anything else that they have planned for the future, which is another thing we're going to be discussing. Do they have any other singles on the way? What else is on the plans for Waterfront? All of this and more in today's episode of the Desert Tiger Podcast. And well, well, before we jump into this interview with Waterfront, I think we take a quick moment to tell you about one of the best ways that you can support the Desert Tiger Podcast, and that is DesertTigerMerch.com. Because we just got two brand new items over there and they are moving quick. Our new t-shirt, the DT1, and the new Desert Treading Gray Tank Top. They are a hit with fans of the DTP so far. And you yourself can go cop yourself one over at DesertTigerMerch.com. All right. And now that that's been said, I think that it is time that we have an encore.
The Desert Tiger Podcast. Hello, drummer. You are Graham, right? Correct. Correct. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. So we got Dan and Graham. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So uh, being a pretty new band, I guess I will just probably start off with letting you guys introduce yourselves and then we'll move on from there. Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Dan. Um, I'm the lead vocalist of the group. Uh, I have been with the band since the literal very beginning. And I'm Graham, and I'm the drum drummer, drum man. I've also been with the band from the the very beginning. Okay, so you guys are part of the initial group's beginnings. So exactly how did Waterfront come together then? Uh, so 2019, back in April, we were leaving a concert at the university, and it was actually Graham and I who walked out of the concert. Graham offered me a ride home. I just straight up said to him, I'm going to be honest, man, seeing those guys perform, this was actually Tanner's band that we saw, who's, in, who's our bassist. Okay. I said to him, I'm going to be honest, man, seeing them just makes me want to be in a band so badly. Graham's response was honestly same, and we found out later that Graham plays drums, I played guitar and sang, and then we talked about our music tastes, they were very similar, we both listened to very, like, punk bands, like, Neck Deep, State Champs, Knuckle Puck, etc., and we just looked at each other and said, like, dude, if you're down for this, I'm 100% <laughs> down for this. <laughs> and so after that, uh, I messaged my buddy Ryan, who I've known, yeah, since, like, basically first year university. Insane guitarist. I knew that he would be, like, the perfect fit. I messaged him, and he was 100% down. And so things just kind of started falling into place. Uh, we met, or we didn't meet. We saw Tristan at another uh, concert that we were going to see. And we were talking about our project, and he just said, 100%, yeah, I'll play bass. And so we were a four-piece for a long time. So back in May or June, uh, roughly May or June, we were a four-piece until we, uh, or we had a concert back in March. And Tanner came up to us and said, I want to play for you guys because I uh, wanted to just focus on vocals instead of playing guitar and sing. And so we put Tanner on bass, we put Tristan on rhythm guitar, and Ryan was still on lead guitar, and that's kind of how we came to form. Okay, so being from Lethbridge then, are some of you uh, students of the same school that Tanner had attended as well? Yeah, so uh, we're all students at the University of Lethbridge. Um, I just graduated last year along with Ryan. Tristan, still a student, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Tanner is as well, and um, so am I. And, so, and yeah, so is Graham. So. <laughs> oh, just uh, three of us are still students, and two of us graduated last year. Okay, all inside the music program, or some of you inside of different areas? Yeah, I think all of us except Tristan were actually in digital audio. Uh, Tristan was in guitar, but I believe he was switching he's in education now i think he, yeah he's yeah. uh he's a teacher no oh, okay okay nice so i saw on your guys's social media that your guys's newest song encore was the first one that was written fully by the full band so i want to dive into your debut single loose cannon first of course so if encore was written by the full band who exactly was the uh creative mind the passion behind loose cannon uh, so that was me. Um, as of right now, I kind of I've written all the songs basically, and Loose Cannon was um, like I said, we were talking about our uh, music tastes, uh, me and Graham, and so Loose Cannon was kind of along that lines of like a punk kind of sound. Um, I was just experimenting with punk riffs, but I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like to experiment a little bit away from a standard. Uh, four chord riffs you know the very like sort of pop punk kind of riffs yeah and so that's why for this uh for loose cannon i kind of was experimenting with the riffs where like you start on the e but then you go to that kind of weird sounding like diminished chord so it just i really like the sound of that and it sounded like a party song and I just kind of wrote some lyrics to go along with that, you know, just being a loose cannon, just not giving a damn about what 
you think of others or what others think of you. So, yeah, that's kind of how Loose Cannon basically came to fruition. Definitely uh, following that pop punk mentality for sure right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. And I like uh, definitely trying to change up the approach with the uh, musical style as well. And I definitely enjoy the uh, opening riff of this one of Loose Cannon too. Definitely got me uh, moving right off the bat. Hey, nice. Thanks, man. Mm hmm. All right. So, of course, there's a little bit of time in between Loose Cannon and Encore, even though you guys had demoed these songs around the same time so was the pandemic part of what played a uh part of the decision to take a little bit of more time with releasing your second single or were there other factors involved with that as well i don't think the pandemic really i mean of course we kind of we had to stop practicing for a while we couldn't play any more shows um but we recorded this back in like january i think yeah yeah, yeah. so we, we've been sitting on it for a while and we had to we went through quite a few rounds of mixing and getting the master and everything and we really wanted to focus on uh the promotion for this one and and really building up the uh excitement and stuff for like that so like the song comes out august 7th and then leading up to it we've been really pushing social media and spotify and the pre-saves and all that stuff um yeah, that, I think that's probably the main reason why it's so long is because we, we, we didn't really do much promotion for Loose Cannon and we wanted to do a lot more for Encore. Yeah, Loose Cannon was kind of just released on a whim, almost like we wanted to have just some form of content out on mm-hmm. streaming platforms, whereas Encore was much more planned. We were able to, yeah, do promotions and even, like, yeah, do things like this podcast and such, so. Hmm. Definitely. It's uh, it's kind of difficult when it comes down to it, because like even with the first single, you want to be able to take your time with uh, making sure that you can do that as well. But at the same time, when you're trying to maybe book shows or do other things of that manner, trying to make a splash, a lot of people want to see what your uh, demographics look like, what your statistics look like. So you almost have to put something out just so that they have that opportunity to see that you at least have material and you are legitimate band. Exactly, yeah. And I think with Loose Cannon, it was also a little bit of, we didn't really know what we were doing. (laughs) So uh, (laughs) we didn't really think about it too much. We just kind of put the song out uh, without doing a whole lot of promotion. This time we're really nailing that, that. We know about music and mixing, not necessarily about releasing and marketing and such like that. (laughs) We're learning. All right. So does having someone like Tanner on board now, does that help with assisting and doing so? Seeing as how he has released a few albums before and he has also just even recently released a single. Oh, 100%. Tanner has definitely been like such a leg up for us um especially because yeah like you said he's been doing this for years he's released a bunch of content and really good content too um but he actually knows the ins and outs of sort of when to release things um just certain things that you can do before a release that would really help it reach a bigger audience sarah um so absolutely yeah having tanner as part of the group has been a huge help and even for encore too like he's been a real leg up in terms of just the promotion for that as well okay awesome so you guys bring in tanner i think he also helped with a little bit of the uh mixing and the uh production behind the scenes as well of encore and otherwise so let's jump a little bit into encore since we've already spoken about loose cannon what does encore mean to you guys Encore was actually a song, again, written by me, uh, but it was a song that I had written even before I had, like, talked to Graham. Um, actually, first time I ever performed the song was at a gig called Tooney Theater at the university, um, and it was just, like, this small little dramatic thing, and it was called Tooney Theater because you could literally pay a Tooney to get in. Um, it was run by my friends, and actually, uh, so I had, I had Tanner... And my buddies Leonard and Carter initially play this thing. And this was the song that we played. Um, or sorry, Leonard couldn't make it, so I actually had to have my buddy Nate step in. Um, but yeah, I had written this song 
uh, a while before I even talked to Graham that night. Um, I was just kind of sitting in my room. I was thinking, oh, I really want to get more into songwriting. So I just kind of sat down at my house and just kind of took some longer nights whenever I had days off. And for, so for me personally, I know others have been, uh, different interpretations, but in terms of the lyrics, uh, I always kind of pictured it as being in a city like Lethbridge where it you don't necessarily see some like larger audiences, especially when you're a smaller name or you're just starting out. But going to certain shows and seeing some other acts live, it always got me thinking of like, God, like these acts deserve bigger crowds because they're just such good performers, they're such good bands. And so that's kind of the whole idea behind Encore where you know, some of the lyrics are like, ooh, divide and concord, because you seem to be having fun tonight. You deserve an encore, because you've got the end in sight. So, yeah, just kind of tying into that whole idea of, yeah, seeing acts that I've always cherished throughout the years and just thinking that they deserve a bigger audience, basically. Okay, nice. I really yeah. appreciate that. Definitely when you come from somewhere that like in a lot of areas and even bigger cities definitely have their local bands that maybe don't necessarily break out beyond but especially when it comes to a smaller town like that where you guys you become much more proud of the bands who do uh start to make a name for themselves and start to actually break out of the area because it doesn't necessarily happen from a lot of those cities everyone claims much larger territories even from like even in the past a lot of bands that came from small areas would just say oh i'm just from calgary or i'm from edmonton or we're from vancouver but yeah. to champion a small city like that is really a special thing yeah like um i'm sure most people think that most canadian artists are from like toronto or vancouver one of the few like differences is nickelback uh being from hannah but mm -hmm. Yeah, it just it really doesn't happen a lot, or if it does, it's one in a million, like one in a million, basically. Feel reckless, cause I've been having too much fun in the town. I feel weightless, cause there ain't nobody dragging me down. Get the momentum running through my feet I don't really care for patience No, I don't really got the time So come on, stand up and go before your time As I forget the energy through your mind Say, come on It's a new temptation Yes, I am a loose kid And I hope you understand As I can bring you this time I know it's a brand new time again Don't you try and stop and get the cameras ready for Show, let's go. I feel alive. No, I won't back down. I won't just live to survive. So bring the lights. Have them shine on me. I'll be 
Desert Tiger Podcast. So you had both of these songs written before, well, at least one of these songs written beforehand, but you had both of these songs written in 2019, demoed out and everything else. Now we're in August of 2020, so how has the band's songwriting dynamics grown over this period of time? It's still remained fairly consistent. The guys uh, definitely, like, Tanner obviously writes songs as well. Um, and so we're thinking of now that we're actually planning on getting back into it, and especially when concerts are, and tours are able to come back, we're definitely thinking of implementing that more. Um, Ryan also writes his own guitar licks that we want to implement. Tristan even has his own uh, songwriting capabilities that we want to incorporate as well. So as of right now, it was just kind of like, because I guess me and Graham were the ones to start the band. These were like the products that we had. And because they were finished, we kind of focused on them. But now that we actually have time to focus and record on other things, we're hoping that we can take ideas from not just myself, but also, like I said, Tanner, Tristan, Ryan, etc. So it's a bit more of everyone, not just I wrote the lyrics and then everyone else did the instrumentation Mm -hmm. okay awesome so what was the band's first live shows like and are you guys taking the opportunity during this downtime to maybe grow your production in that area as well so the live shows those were (laughs) (laughs) oh oh man um well okay our first ever live show was literally just Uh, open mic at a bar here in Lethbridge called The Slice. And, (laughs) oh man, we were allowed like a 10 to 15 minute slot. Um, And we only had like three originals at the time. And those were Loose Cannon, Encore, and then one other. Um, And then we also did like a cover as well. And it was, (laughs) it was was a bit rough. I'm not going to lie. But I feel like every band's first ever performance probably is oh yeah yeah Yeah. you probably even got those from like the bigger names too but we're definitely uh taking this more seriously in the sense that we've tried to make it so that we have at least one practice a week if we can sometimes even twice a week and yeah in terms of production there's a whole like spectrum that we've kind of looked at in terms of we've even talked about uh one of us potentially learning to play like keyboard so that we can you know incorporate that as well we've even talked about maybe um bringing like a sixth member into the group so so just seeing how you guys can continue to grow the sound and even just continue to add that to the way things do because even you like as a singer who's continued to or taken off the guitar in order to move around can maybe even just take that one song to stand by the keyboard slow things down a little bit yeah yeah exactly or even um i don't know like uh one of those live synthesizers that has like the 16 buttons i forget what it's called i'm blanking like an adobe live yeah yeah yeah. um yeah just to incorporate some sounds like that just to feel like we're constantly evolving and we're never in a consistent state of oh this is what we are and we're going to be like this for the next five ten years mm-hmm. okay awesome so speaking about going into the future you also mentioned that you have another song written possibly some more so what exactly does the uh, future plans look for like for the uh, rest of 2020 i know that we can't exactly maybe not play live shows in front of crowds but exa- how else are we uh staying connected with the fans it's yeah no covid was definitely a hard thing to deal with like during the summer before covid hit we had plans to potentially go on like a cross canada or maybe just like a western canada tour but like i said covid kind of threw that out the window and so it's just a matter of letting our instagram followers and facebook followers know that we're not like, this isn't going to be a dagger in our side. We're not putting this strictly to rest. We're still working on songs. We're still working on content. When we'll release them is a bit varying. Um, but 
we just want them to know that we are still working on this stuff so that they're not like their spirits aren't brought down so mm -hmm. and yeah in terms of other originals we do have other originals but we got to find a time to record them and yeah kind of do the same thing that we did with encore but just with these new songs mm -hmm. well for sure you definitely want to make sure that you're taking the time to craft these uh you know essentially children into the uh perfect things that you possibly can before you present them out into the world yeah yeah exactly okay fantastic so obviously you're both students of the audio the music world so do you guys have any other projects on the go in the works uh what other ways are you guys using this these studies to your benefits i don't really have anything i just this yeah kind of the same for me like um i mean i'm not gonna lie like i am working uh jobs and stuff for money but it's just a matter of um hopefully we continue with this waterfront uh continue with the songs and stuff and market them properly and hopefully we can potentially start thinking about being contacted by even people in like calgary edmonton maybe who knows like in the next few years or maybe in the next year or so we get contacted by people out in vancouver or like toronto they stumble across our stuff and say hey i like this i like these songs i would like to get in touch with these guys and that's kind of like all we're at, all uh, we're at for now. I mean, I understand some of the other guys, they're also still in school, but yeah, that's kind of all we got right now. So kind of streamlining that. All right. Awesome. So obviously being musicians and music students, that takes quite a bit of your time, I'm sure. But when you're not focusing on the... Uh, music world what exactly are you guys doing to uh take up some of your time take your interests take your mind off the uh, worries of the world i like to read I read a lot of like theology kind of stuff uh i'm doing a half of my degree is in religious studies but i like reading about that stuff yeah i don't know um the office is great <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah the office is fantastic um yeah and i i like i said i just i work two jobs um i work at a restaurant and then i also work at a liquor store here so i'm keeping busy but even in my spare time um i'm not gonna lie like i am just chilling at my desk and i got a piano a bunch of guitars around me so i sometimes i'm still writing um if an idea comes to my head i work off of that i also like play video games i also watch hockey i'm a huge habs fan i know you live in calgary so you probably hit my guts right now um <laughs> <laughs> so yeah just kind of standard things um yeah kind of keeping it chill Nah, it's okay. I'm actually a uh, Phoenix Coyotes fan. I'm an old school Winnipeg Jets fan, oh. so I moved with the team. <laughs> uh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> so I just uh, I just hate most teams in general because Phoenix usually doesn't go very far. But I'm faithful. I'm faithful this year. <laughs> hey, I mean they're doing well in the in the playoffs right now, aren't they? Winning their series. Um, I mean now that we have Taylor Hall on the team, uh, things are looking <laughs> a lot brighter. Yeah, 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 totally. All right. So, uh, how are you um, with uh, watching sports like hockey? Are you watching them with the no fans? How are you finding that experience? I I wasn't sure how I felt about it initially, but after watching a couple of Habs games, uh, having no fans there for me at least, it really doesn't change much of anything. Like I I can't say anything about the players and their react and their experiences, but just actually watching the games, I like, I don't know. I still get hyped. Like whenever I score or whenever Montreal scores, they still like jump across the room and go like, hell yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it really doesn't change anything for me personally. I really enjoy it. I love the fact that, well, just using the NHL specifically, uh, Batman's been really smart about keeping the players and 
their little hubs and as of now like just finding that there's zero new covid cases since the actual start it really is a good feeling and it's just a it's a good feeling of normalcy like you know this was a time when things were back to normal and yeah sure the, the fans can't actually go into the rink but honestly just watching the games from t- uh, from my TV in my living room, it's still a really good feeling, and it's good to have it back. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely agree, and I'm I'm uh, hoping for you that the uh, Canadians can continue to stay strong in their series. <laughs> Thanks, man. We'll see you on Friday. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Tomorrow, 1 p.m. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to... Before I let you guys go, where can the ambush, the audience of Desert Tiger, find out more about you and Waterfront? Yeah, so we have all our social medias. Uh, we're on Facebook uh, at Waterfront Official Band. That's the same with Instagram with the same tag, Waterfront Official Band. Um, I also know we have Twitter. Yeah, WF. WF Official. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, we're on all streaming platforms. We're on Apple Music, Spotify. Uh, I think we're even on some, like, off ones, like Deezer and, like, Bandcamp. Yeah, not Bandcamp. Not Bandcamp? Yeah, okay. Deezer, Napster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome, and they definitely should go and check that out. All right, Graham and Dan, I want to thank you both so very much for hey. joining us here and uh, telling us all about Waterfront, Loose Cannon, and your latest single, Encore. Awesome. Thank you so much for having man. We uh, for having us, man. We really appreciate it. Today on the Desert Tiger podcast, we played two tracks from Waterfront for you. In the middle of the show, we played a loose cannon, and we kicked off today's episode with their new single Encore. And if you, the ambush want an encore of either of these tracks, You can find both of them, yes, that's right, on your favorite music streaming service. And when you're there, go ahead and hit follow so that when Waterfront drops more music, you can stay up to date and it can be in your ears ASAP. And with that being said, I think it's about time that we went and thanked the members of Waterfront for joining us here today on the Desert Tiger podcast to tell us all about those songs, all about the band. And well, last but not least, I also have to thank you, the Ambush, the listener of this episode. If you haven't gone ahead and joined the Ambush, guess what? It's easy. It's free. All you have to do is go ahead and hit subscribe on your favorite podcast listening service. If you've already gone ahead and do that, you can also help the show grow by reviewing us. Give us a five-star review on Stitcher or Apple Podcasts. That would help us grow, and you can also share this podcast on your social media. It's as easy as taking a screenshot of what you're listening to and tagging the Desert Tiger podcast, Waterfront, or me, the Golden G, so that we can show you love for listening to awesome music and awesome podcasts because you deserve it. Yes, you do. And until next week, well, next week, actually, we're joined by Caesar, another fairly new artist who is releasing his new ep hustle and passion we're going to be going behind the music on that one getting all of the details and i can't wait for you to join me and until then i want you to go out there and chase your own dreams whatever they are because you know that's how we do it here we go out there we put our paws in the sand we journey across the desert and we find our desert oasis we find our mountaintop we climb to the top and we let our voice roar out as loud as we can across the crowd and until next week bye bye and stay beautiful